The Big Mountain has an update for Clemson University versus the ACC. The ACC lawsuits are always in the news, so we're back on the Big Mountain to break it down for you. Hey, it's great to have you here on the mountain. I am JY, and this is my good friend Steve. If you're new to the channel, welcome you. We've been following the FSU ACC lawsuits. We've done a few episodes on the Clemson lawsuits, but it's been pretty quiet. We had some commenters asking us, what's going on with Clemson? Because it's not in the news right now. So JY went and dug down into Pickens County and into Mecklenburg County to see what kind of filings were out there. And believe it or not, Steve, there are some filings out there. Nothing, nothing real huge, but it will help us kind of set the timeline, I think, moving forward a little bit. Because as I said, you're just not hearing much right now. So I want to start in Pickens County, South Carolina. This is where Clemson filed their suit before the ACC filed their lawsuit in Mecklenburg, North Carolina. And as I said on our first, uh, second episodes, I mean, Clemson, very polished. Their first filing, very well done. Uh, it was a really good read, just the way they laid everything out. Um, so it looks like, as I read some of these filings, they're being very cautious with how they're dealing with the ACC in terms of sensitive data, trade secrets. They're not necessarily agreeing that there's trade secrets, but they also understand the ACC is saying that they think there's trade secrets. So they're being cautious with that and saying, okay, we'll, we'll let a court decide that. We're not gonna step on your toes and we're not gonna go blow this up into the press like maybe another university did a little bit that we know of. Um, but back on March 25th, so I'm gonna kind of lay out since our last episode, because there have been multiple filings here. Uh, back on March 25th, the court ordered that the record be temporarily sealed until further, uh, until they further order of a hearing. This was due to the fact that Clemson redacted some of the allegations in their complaint. Again, as we talked about, there were pages of redactions mm -hmm. because of the ESPN agreement, some of the grant of rights stuff being very conscious here. Um, so they redacted some of this in their complaint and that the plaintiff, which is the ACC here, um, deems them, I'm sorry, the defendant, which is the ACC here, deems them to contain terms of confidential information and trade secrets. On March 28th, the parties together filed this stipulation of service. The ACC stated that while they waive any defect of service claim, they do not waive and will preserve all jurisdictional defenses that they may have. The ACC has a deadline for a responsive pleading uh, which are, they actually enlarged it by 14 days here on March 28th. And so that deadline now is May 2nd. So we are finally getting to the, the endings of when they need to be getting these filings done. So May 2nd here uh, is when the ACC has their deadline. Also on March 28th, Clemson made a motion for a complex, complex case designation and assignment to a single judge. Clemson gives several reasons why this should be approved, but also states that it does not meet the criteria for assignment to the South Carolina Business Court Program, which is the court in North Carolina is more of a business court. I don't know if they, they deem them exactly the same in these, but uh, Clemson said we don't need it to go to the business court, but we are asking for this complex case designation. They state that the ACC was informed and really took no position in terms of consenting or objecting to either of those uh, positions. The court ordered that this action be granted on uh, April 12th and assigned the pretrial motions and other matters to the Honorable Perry Gravely. So we now have a Gravely we can start mm, talking about right. in South Carolina. We're going to have a wall of judges. That's we're right. Cooper, up here. well, Bledsoe. Cooper, and now we got apparently Gravely in uh, in South Carolina. The Big Mountain Judge Hall of Fame. There you go. <laughs> Levy's at the top. Oh, yeah, yeah, always yes. at the top. I know. The, the Mount Rushmore of yeah. the, the Big Mountain. Uh, on April 3rd, Clemson filed a motion for entry of discovery and scheduling order and an interim confidential order. They say, oh my gosh, that's a lot of words. Let, let's break down what that means. Again, as, as I said, they're being very careful about confidential information right now. They're trying to play nice with the ACC. Yep. Um, Clemson filed their first request for production on March 19th. 
The ACC has until May 3rd to reply. So I gave you a May 2nd date before. Here's a May 3rd. So beginning of May, the end of next week, they, they have a lot of deadlines here in the ACC. Clemson states they cannot meaningfully prosecute this case and the court cannot mean, meaningfully assess the complaint without receiving unredacted copies of the ESPN agreements. Clemson requests the court to enter this motion to govern the production of the ESPN agreements. The entry of the confidentiality order would afford satisfactory temporary production of these agreements. Council did consult again with the ACC and they did not object to this interim confidential order. Obviously, why would they? They want things to remain confidential, but they did object to the discovery and scheduling order. Clem Clemson ends with a request for an expedited hearing. They want to get things moving because it's been quiet here for over two months. They want things to move in their preferred venue like we talked about with the ACC in North Carolina, Absolutely. And Florida, and Florida State. Yep. So real quick in Mecklenburg, just a brief update on, on where they're at. On April 3rd, the ACC filed a motion to seal the ACC ESPN Media Rights Agreement. Same thing that it did with FSU. We already heard from Bledsoe how he feels about that. <coughs> on April 22nd, the parties filed a similar stip, uh, stipulation of services and deadlines, just like they did in South Carolina. This filing in North Carolina, the parties stipulate that Clemson is not waiving its right to assert the defense of lack of personal jurisdiction in North Carolina, particularly on the grounds of sovereign immunity in the state. The ACC states that while Clemson waives any defect of service claim, it does not waive and, pre and preserves all jurisdictional defenses it may have. So they've kind of filed these things in both. They both agreed to them. They filed them in both, in both uh, states. Um, the parties agree that Clemson will have through May 6th to file and serve its response, pleading, or motion. Clemson will have until May 7th to file and serve a brief in opposition to the ACC's motion to seal the media rights agreement. So it sounds like, Steve, here in early May, after two months of really not hearing too much, we're finally going to start seeing some motions. We're going to finally start seeing some briefs on this. Um, I think we can kind of guess, not guess, we know what's going to happen with the motion to seal. We already heard it. Uh, with the FSU case, so we kind of know what's going to happen in Mecklenburg County. Really going to be interesting to see what happens in Pickens <coughs> County, South Carolina, with Judge, what was it? Gravely, mm. new judge. So, any thoughts on on Clemson? Well, first, just want to say, you know, this case, it's a, it's a, it, you know, it's a train coming down the tracks. You know, we had to do two parallel tracks for a while. Now we've got a third rail, mm -hmm. uh, and they always say the third rail is the most dangerous. So we'll see what comes out of this, South Carolina. Uh, like you said, we'll see what happens in Pickens County. Right. I have I have no idea what to expect here, uh, other than we know what to expect in Mecklenburg because right. we've already oh, yeah. seen this is like part two. Yes. Uh, so we'll see what happens in Pickens, and then I do want to uh, indulge in a little bit of salacious speculation. Okay? Do it. I brought this up before. Um, the 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 difference between the Florida State filings and the Clemson, I, I have a, a theory on that. Mm. To me, Florida State they want oh, they want oh, not only do both sides or both teams or programs want out of the ACC. My view is Florida State also wants away from ESPN. They have no care in the world for what ESPN wants. Uh, and, and their their um, you know basically the property value of their secret contracts and trade secrets and all of that they're just burning every bridge on their sure. way out. Whereas Clemson is taking a different tact. Um, you know they they are being more careful. Uh, they are being I would just say more respectful of the ESPN Disney position and of Ace the ACC's agreements with ESPN yes. and Disney. Just being a little more respectful of that. And so my speculation is, and and I've said this for a long time. I, my contacts in the Big Ten say Florida State is pretty much a shoe in. They they got a spot in the Big Ten. Um, no problem whatsoever. And I think Florida State knows that. Whereas I've never really heard anybody. Um, any of my contacts say really anything about Clemson, not anything good or bad, just, sure. just kind of not really, they're not really brought up. So 
either either I think Clemson is either trying to uh, keep their options open, not piss anybody off, right? Or I do think it's possible that Clemson has gotten some kind of indications that ESPN would be open to, as long as they don't burn the whole place down on the way out, right? Maybe shifting them. Uh, you know, if they're going to leave the ACC, moving that property over to uh, the SEC, which right. ESPN also nice. owns that right, those rights, and would just increase the value, I think, of yep. the SEC in general. So I think they're trying to leave their options open there um, for sure. I don't think it's salacious at all. I think you're reading tea leaves. I've used that in the last episode. Um, and I think you're spot on. And I'm going to give you a big pat on the back and a gold star when all this comes to play and say the Big Mountain, specifically Steve, on the Big Mountain, was get, had this right from the get-go. And it makes complete sense. Yep. And it also, I mean, you can see FSU. They want to burn the place yes. down. They're leaving. They're they bombs. don't care what yeah. happens to yeah. the ACC when they're gone. Let it crash and burn. And Clemson... Whether it's because they care about the other members or because they care about ESPN. I think that's what it is. You know, we'll see. But certainly taking two very, very different uh, paths here in terms of how they're going about things. And and the specific difference is that respect towards those contracts, those trade secrets with Mm -hmm. ESPN. Very good point. Very good point. So we'll try to stay on Clemson. It looks like here in May things are going to get heated up. You know, we like to read briefs and do all that kind of stuff. So uh, while it looks like FSU may take a little bit of a lull while we're waiting on appeals and some things, looks like Clemson might heat up with some of these briefs. So make sure you give this one a like. Subscribe if you like this content. We stay on all things ACC lawsuit related. We don't have skin in the game, uh, but we enjoy looking at this stuff. And as Steve said, he likes to pick where he thinks things are going. FSU, Big Ten. Clemson, SEC, we'll see how that uh, uh, plays out. And if Steve gets his gold star, like I said, he's going to I love gold stars. (laughs) (laughs) So that, hey, we thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time on the Big Mountain. Clemson is keeping their options open.